This episode of Everything Medieval is made possible in part by generous support from viewers. If you'd like to donate as little as $1, go to patreon.com backslash everything medieval. Hey, how's it going today, guys? I've got a new thing to show you. I got a traditional longbow made by Graven, and I've wanted to get one of these for a while now, especially because I need some longbows for the production that I've mentioned before. I am shooting a uh, dramatic series called The Way of Glory, so I need some traditional longbows. This is the very first one I picked up. Now my background in archery is extremely limited. In fact, the last time I was ever shown how to shoot a bow was probably over 20 years ago, uh, maybe at a church camp. We went to a summer church camp and uh, archery was one of the things we did there. A lot of fun. I enjoyed it so much and I have no idea why I haven't done any archery since then. The skill that some archers possess is just really admirable. Uh, it's not me. I, I am a novice at this entirely. So, you know, I can talk to you about how it feels to me, but since I'm a novice and not an expert, I really can't say, you know, how this might compare to another one. So these are just going to be my thoughts. So just to let you know, I'm not being compensated in any way by Graven traditional longbows. I wanted to make sure that I was uh, being transparent about that. And so this review is just uh, my way of showing you something that I really enjoy, something that I really like, and something that you can check out if you want to. Um, this bow is really growing on me. Not that I didn't like it when I first opened it right out of the package, but being able to uh, feel its power and uh, just... It just feels good when you release the arrow. When this longbow arrived in the mail, it was in a straight, long package. And I really wasn't sure what I was going to get. Um, the reason it's in a long package and not in like a, a wider package is that it's not strung. And the bow is pretty much just like a pull uh, until you actually string it. So um, that was something that I wasn't necessarily ready for. <laughs> Um, you need a bow stringer in most cases. There are ways where you can take a, a long bow and, and use your legs to uh, bend it just enough to get the string on there. But there are some specific instructions um, that come with the bow that say, I think it actually says it'll void the warranty if you don't use a bow stringer. And the bow stringer doesn't come with a bow, so it's like an extra 20 bucks. Um, I got mine at a just bass pro shops but you could probably get it anywhere it's just a piece of nylon with a couple of leather straps at the end but it does work really well to uh, to string the bow the first time I put the bow string on I was a little bit afraid because you have to apply quite a bit of pressure to get that bow uh, to bend I was afraid that it might snap and uh, it's probably not a fear that's really warranted at all I've ordered some wood arrows but they haven't arrived yet so they're still in the process of being made uh, so for the time being, I have these modern arrows. Uh, they have like feather fletchings, and uh, they're pretty lightweight. They're fine. They they work. They're sufficient. This bow has a 40 to 45 pound draw weight, which makes it uh, pretty easy to pull back. Now, just watching the videos that I shot, I noticed that probably not doing this with a lot of skill and some of you may point out you know you're not pulling it back far enough I think that's the case here the string should probably be pulled back to the mouth or to the eye you know, that side of the face and I'm not pulling it back far enough and this is going to limit the range and the power but um, it actually does have quite a bit of power even at 40 to 45 pounds which is very easy to pull back I think this is a probably a really good weight for a beginner to uh, intermediate um, because it is quite easy to pull it back to get some good distance. I've wanted to take this out into a field and see how far I can shoot it, maybe a couple hundred yards, see if I can get it that distance. Now Olympic archers, they shoot at a range, I believe it's just about three times the distance that I've uh, set my target up at. I set up the target at 75 feet, it's about 23 meters. At this distance, it's probably like a beginner's distance. So let's get right into it. Let me tell you more about this bow. This is a 72 inch long bow. It's uh, pretty much exactly my height, six feet tall, and uh, it's made out of hickory. I thought it was going to be a little bit thicker when I got this. Before I got it, I thought it would be either thicker this way or, or deeper. Uh, I was a little bit surprised that it's actually so narrow and uh, so thin here. But um, perhaps it would be thicker if the draw weight was, uh, was heavier. If you're accustomed to holding a bow, you're going to notice right away that this bow doesn't have any sighting system and it doesn't have an arrow rest. Those things really aren't necessary for accuracy and uh, this bow doesn't have them. 
instead of an arrow rest though it does have this little piece of leather that uh, is next to or is attached to um, the bow probably with some glue or epoxy I'm not 100% sure on what its purpose is other than to uh, possibly protect the wood as as the arrow breezes by and, and so just to keep it from being scraped up it's already done a little bit of that yeah, it's protected the wood because you can see on it how it has these scrapes so it looks like it's obviously protecting the wood uh, I can't think of any other reason for it to be there and um, if it's if that's the case that's fine it's probably not going to be historically accurate from what I've read medieval longbows didn't actually have a grip on them so that's sort of an addition for comfort um, I wouldn't have cared either way if this had a grip or if it didn't one of the reasons it might not have had a grip in the past is that generally you you want to hold the bow in the center of balance and it's not necessarily in the center of the bow so it's something that you get a feel for as you're shooting a lot of my shots were just going over the target and by the target I didn't want to misrepresent my skill here and just show you the good shots so I've included pretty much everything here or at least a, a portion of everything I wish I could say that the four hours I spent with the bow this day and four hours that I spent on the previous day really did improve my skill and, and my shot accuracy, but uh, it's just not the case. It does take a lot of time to really hone those skills. So would I recommend this longbow to someone like you? I would. I think this is a great beginner to intermediate longbow. If you're looking for something like that, this is definitely the one that you should pick up. Uh, it's affordably priced. Um, fairly affordably I mean especially when you look at um, if you look at archery if you look at bows these days you'll find that you're gonna spend hundreds of dollars but this is pretty affordably pretty affordably priced really uh, when you compare it to the competition um, it's simple it's uh, it's gonna be very easy to store this thing the only thing I'm worried about not really worried but the only thing I'm, I've been thinking about really is it's just uh, keeping it away from excessive humidity or excessive dryness. So probably have to find some sort of um, bag to put this in to store it so that the wood doesn't dry out um, so it stays nice for a long time. So those are my thoughts about the Graven traditional longbow. Thanks for watching today, guys. If you're not subscribed, you made it this far, go ahead and subscribe. I'll talk to everybody later.